Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to give everyone just a minute or so to, to connect, and then we will get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We will get started in just a minute. All right, we are going to get started. Good noon or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Crystal Nettles. I'm with the Orange County Water District, and I am so thrilled you are joining us today for our webinar, Exploring Careers in the Water and Wastewater Industry. We have an exciting and robust program for you today, but first I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. As a webinar attendee, you are muted. This is to reduce background noise. If you are logged in and your screen name is not correct, you may want to change it so that if you ask a question, we can call on you correctly. Should you have a question for our speakers, please type your question into the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. You may also use the raised hand feature. To keep the webinar moving, speakers will wait until the end of the presentation to answer questions. Written questions will be answered first, followed by those raising their hand. And in the event we run out of time and do not get to your question, or if you have any follow-up questions, please email us at info at ocwd.com. We also did receive a few questions ahead of time, and we will try our best to answer them for you. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording tomorrow via email. Next, I would like to get to know our audience a little bit better. I think we all would. Since you're soon getting to know us, let's learn a little bit about you. So please select the option that best applies to you. And we'll give everyone just a few more moments to answer. All right. So we do have a large percentage of you in college. So thank you all so much for joining us. But we do have some of you uh, that have been in the industry for a while. One final question. How confident are you in your, in your chosen career? So we'll give everyone just a few moments to answer. All right, we're gonna end that polling and share the results. So the vast majority of you have some idea, but aren't 100% sure. So hopefully we can help you in that decision today. Excellent. Now, before we get started, I wanted to provide just a bit of background on the Orange County Water District, as well as our partner organizations joining us today. The Orange County Water District manages the groundwater basin that supplies 77% of the water supply to two and a half million people in North and Central Orange County. We replenish the basin in a number of ways, including Santa Ana River water, storm water, rainfall, and recycled water from our award-winning groundwater replenishment system, or GWRS for short. 
We employ about 225 people, including board members, seven of which are elected and three are appointed. We also have several internship opportunities. Our main campus is located in Fountain Valley with field offices in Anaheim and Corona. We are very fortunate to have representatives from outside agencies with us today. The Orange County Sanitation District, Black and Veatch, and Corolo Engineers. <clears throat> OCWD has worked with them on a variety of projects over the years and we are proud of the partnerships that have formed. The Orange County Sanitation District is the regional wastewater sewer provider for 2.6 million people in central and northwest Orange County. The Sanitation District collects and recycles 189 million gallons of wastewater every day and is a partner with OCWD on the groundwater replenishment system. Black & Veatch is an employee-owned engineering, procurement, consulting, and construction company with a 100-year legacy of innovation in sustainable infrastructure. They are currently working with us on our, ground, or on our GWS final expansion. And finally, Corolo Engineers is an environmental engineering firm that specializes in the planning, design, and construction of water and wastewater facilities. Corolo supports OCWD and the Sanitation District on the final expansion of the GWRS. I would now like to welcome our amazing moderator for today, Jeff Mosier, as well as our panelists who will introduce themselves to the group. Thank you, Crystal. So if the panel members can join by video, we're gonna do a brief introduction, but first I'd like to say thank you to Orange County Water District. This is a topic that's resonating with our industry. We have a little bit of information on the turnover or, or how many uh, positions that we're gonna be looking for moving forward. But there's, a, there's great opportunity within the water and wastewater field for employment. And often, as in my case, I didn't know a lot about this industry until I happened upon it as part of a, of a previous job and really liked the work that I've been doing in, in this field for 25 years. So I'm, I'm Jeff Mosier, I'm with Crowell Engineers, and I've done a lot of different aspects related to water in my career, and that's what's, I think, exciting about it. But we're set up with a, with a great panel with, with a variety of backgrounds from a variety of organizations, and I think you're gonna learn a lot from what they have to say and from their experience. So I'd like for them to introduce themselves uh, briefly, initially, and first, uh, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Mark. Um, I uh, am a principal hydrogeologist, Orange County Water District. Um, I've been with the Water District for a little over 15 years. Uh, before that, I was uh, in private consulting for a little over 20 years. So yes, I'm an old guy. Um, I've got a bachelor's in geology and a master's in geology with an emphasis in hydrogeology. Thank you, Dave. Yana? Hi, my name is Yana Safaric. I'm, I'm the principal scientist uh, with the R&D uh, department uh, at the Orange County Water District. My background, my degree uh, undergrad is in microbiology and I was a minor in chemistry. And I also have a master's, I actually have an MBA and I've been with the district actually uh, directly out of school um, when I left Cal State Long Beach. And uh, so I've been with the district for a long time, <laughs> over 30 years. And uh, I worked on various different projects over the years and I watched the district grow from uh, a very small water recycling uh, facility to where it is now at 100 MGD. Thank you. Thank you, Yana. Prem? Hey everyone, uh, my name is Prem Parmar. I'm the uh, new lab director here uh, as of three months ago. Um, I graduated from UC Irvine with a bachelor's in chemistry, uh, currently pursuing my master's degree in civil and environmental engineering. Uh, I've worked for the district now for a total of 13 years. I also worked for two years for the uh, city of Santa Monica at their water treatment plant. Well, interesting background and congratulations on, on the, the new job, Prem. Derek? Yeah, I'm Derek Mansell. I am the uh, chief plant operator here at the Orange County Water District. Um, graduated with a business degree from the University of Montana. Been here for about 14 years now. Um, it's been a great job. It's a uh, great place to work. Yeah, it's, it's good to hear, Derek. Mary? 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mary Farosmer, and I'm a senior plant operator at Orange County Sanitation District. I've been in operation for 11 years, and I joined Orange County Sanitation District operation team in 2019. I'm a grade five wastewater treatment plant operator, and in 2011, I, got, I completed wastewater technology courses in Los Angeles Trade Tech College, and in 2017, I got my master in environmental engineering uh, from Cal State Fullerton. Thank you. Thank you, Mary and Jeff. So my name is Jeff Neiman. I'm a client director for Black & Veatch. My background is civil and environmental engineering. I've uh, been in the industry as a consultant for about 23 years and looking forward to talking about the water industry today. Great, thank you, Jeff. So on the next slide, we just have a little bit of information about the challenge we have as a water wastewater community in terms of being able to replace the good people, the, the experienced people that are in the industry today. So we're calling it a silver tsunami because a lot of these people are older, they have gray hair, and they're going to be retiring soon. So there's a, a number of occupations, different, different types of jobs that this entails in the water and wastewater industry. And so if you look at the information here, the uh, Bureau of, of Labor uh, tracks information related to jobs within different industry. Within the water wastewater industry, our average in terms of what we need to do in terms of replacement by 2024 is higher than, than other industries in the US. We have a bit of a challenge. Um, the good news is that we understand these workforce, workforce issues and we're trying to address them early, be able to attract folks to the industry um, to be able to fill those jobs that are gonna become available. And there's a lot of them. You know, there's 6,000 certified wastewater treatment operators in California, 35,000 drinking water treatment and distribution operators. And San Diego region did a study and they came, in, came up with an estimate that 25% or one quarter of the positions that are currently held within the water, wastewater, uh, municipal sector, they're gonna reach retirement by, by 2024. It's not all gonna happen at once, but that's a lot of people that are gonna be leaving our industry by 2024. And we're really trying to let people know what the opportunities are uh, moving forward. So, on the next slide, we're going to get into uh, the moderated questions, and we're going to interview each one of the panel members. And so first will be Dave Mark. So if I can get, just get Dave on the screen. And while we're doing that, I want to encourage you to write questions in the Q&A. So if you can type your questions in, we can address those later uh, after we've had a chance to talk with each one of the panel members. So, so Dave, I've worked with you over the years. Um, you know, I, I've, I've known you, you, you do a great job. Orange County Water District Hydrogeology Department does a great job in terms of managing the groundwater basin. But, but can you just tell us briefly what hydrogeology is, what you do as a hydrogeologist at the district? Um, you bet, thanks, thanks Jeff. So, um, so hydro, hydrogeology is an area in geology that deals with groundwater. So that's water that's soaked in the ground and has filled up the spaces between sediment grains or maybe fractures in rock. Um, and as Crystal mentioned in central and Northern Orange County, groundwater, that's water pumped out of the ground from wells makes up 77% of the water supply at about half the cost of importing water in our aqueducts from Northern California or, or the Colorado River. You know, water's really heavy. It's expensive to pump it that far. So hydrogeologists deal with the occurrence and movement of groundwater and the quality of that groundwater. Um, is it safe to drink or irrigate crops? Water that's too salty, can't, not only you can't drink it, but it can do, cause havoc on your crops. So deal with water quality as well as groundwater supply. So hydrogeologists need to have an understanding of how to drill and construct wells. So sometimes we're out in the field um, overseeing a drilling contractor, whether it's constructing a large production well for water supply or smaller monitoring wells to characterize the geology and, and the depth to water and, and the water quality. 
Um, and then we're off, often in the office as well. Um, we might be preparing a cross section to help characterize and understand the subsurface. What, what's the geology like where our groundwater occurs? Are we gonna have a good aquifer or a poor aquifer? Um, and then, uh, you know, we might be doing maps, groundwater levels, um, in areas where groundwater has been contaminated from past industrial practices, we might generate maps that show the extent of contamination. Um, and then we also do computer modeling, uh, groundwater flow and contaminant transport. So Dave, one thing that strikes me about hydrogeologists, you guys tend to love your job, right? <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, it's like magic, but can you tell us what you like about it or? why you got into it. Yeah, and, and Jeff, you're right. I, you know, I love my job and, and, and where I work. And, and uh, I mean, I've been doing this a long time and, and I really do enjoy it, which I think is a blessing. Um, so, I mean, I've always had an interest in geology, um, you know, the earth that we walk on, um, but also math and other sciences. You know, hydrogeology is a field where we use multiple sciences, obviously geology, because that's where we, you know, the groundwater occurs below ground. Um, and, and also, you know, physics, how water flows in the subsurface through, they say, a, you know, a porous media or through fractures. Um, chemistry, that's a big deal. What's the quality of the water? Um, and then math, there are equations for groundwater flow and contaminant transport. So I, I just like all the sciences, different uh, aspects that we get to use in our job, not just geology. I also like spending some time outdoors, some of my working time outdoors, not totally cooped up in the office. Um, and then I've also had a concern for the environment. I've spent a lot of my career dealing with uh, groundwater contamination, investigating and cleaning it up. And then finally, just the practical aspects, job security. Um, no matter what's going on with the economy, we always need water. It was a good career choice. So, so Dave, last, last question for you. So what you do is fairly specialized, right? Is it challenging communicating the information that you develop to let's say the engineers, the managers, the public? Is, is that challenging or how, how do you guys address that? No, it's, it's, you know, it's always a challenge. I mean, you know, we often have to explain technical things, to non-technical people, um, whether it's the public or our board of directors. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's a challenge. And, and that's where, you know, oral and written communication skills are important, as well as developing maps and graphics to help explain the old picture is worth a thousand words. So, yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but uh you know, it's a key part of what we do. Right. Thank, thank you, thank you, Dave. I know you do a great job. So keep up, keep up all the good work. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. So next, Yana. You know, you and I have worked over the years, and I know a lot about what you do. But uh, the research side of it's a little bit different, right? And yeah. so, can you tell us maybe just from your personal point of view, what, why you gravitated more to the research side of things, and and then also how that's a benefit for the district. Well, um, th that is a really good question. When I started uh, my degree, uh, I did a graduate in microbiology, so it's in the sciences. In the sciences. So when I started the district, um, my position was actually twofold. Um, originally, it was partly I was hired to uh, do some data entry and do some um, plant, uh, the small plant that we had at the time, some performance analysis and the other half of my uh, uh, position was to work with Dr. Harry Ridgway uh, in the newly developed research uh, department that he was starting to build and so as over the years um, more of my time got spent on the research aspect because the industry at that time was starting to grow the membranes were coming online and more membranes were being developed and the district always had this uh, technology forward perspective and they were always very interested to improve their uh, uh, performance. And uh, Dr. Ridgway was, is like the, was in the forefront of this research uh, for the, on the membranes. And I kind of fell in step with that and he kind of trained me on all this. So I just kind of that research portion of, uh, of my career, that's kind of how it started. 
and just being able to ask the questions uh, and to develop the answers and to work on new things all the time because that's what research is. You, you, uh, there's a question that's kind of is uh, put out by somebody and you need to answer it. And it's not always a straightforward uh, answer. So there's a, there's a lot of variability, um, things change all the time. So it was always uh, that interest and in always keeping your mind going, going forward. So that's kind of kept me going into it. <laughs> And being and, on the forefront of it. Yeah, and Yana, how does how does why is it a benefit to the district to have the work that you do and the research department does? Well, uh, the uh, the district uh, we we are the largest plant in the war for indirect uh, pullover reuse, and because we're so large, we um, we find um, there's a lot of um, issues that come up along the way, and uh, we're very um, forward thinking in how to address a lot of these issues. A lot, of the, a lot of our research is applied to improve the process, to improve, to can we um, uh, help the industry improve their methods, uh, testing different types of membranes, uh, uh, installing different types of membranes and, and different processes. So our purpose uh, in the uh, for the district is to um, look at the process and see if we can improve it uh, improve its function overall. Okay. All right. So here's a trick question. How do you come, <laughs> how do you come up with your ideas, right? Uh, how do you come up with what to research? Cause I, I view it as kind of like, you know, it's a little messy, right? But how do you, how do you prioritize what makes sense to do research projects on? Well, a lot of it comes from, uh, operations come, um, comes along and says, uh, we're having filing issues. And we don't know where it's coming from. And they come over and go, can you find out what it is? <laughs> why, are we why is that happening? So our department is very um, inter intertwined with the operations uh, of the district. So if there's an uh, operational issue that's just not, it's not straightforward, they come to R&D to see if we can uh, answer that question. That's one way. Another way is just, uh, which has been really great working with the district and with the management, uh, let, letting us uh, uh, go forward with it. A lot of times we're ourselves, the staff, the scientists come up with ideas where we can maybe try to improve the process uh, down the line. We also, we, run, we apply for grants from uh, different, uh, different agencies like the Bureau of Reclamation uh, to support some of our ideas uh, to try to improve the process. And most, and one thing we do, we have our research is always applied to the district and to the to the process that we're working with. And and real quick, you have a research facility that you can do, let's say bench scale testing, but you also can do things within the full scale facility as well. Correct. Yes, yeah, so we have a laboratory. Uh, I know Prem is going to be talking about the water quality laboratory, which is separate from us. We have our own lab in a different building, and we also have a pilot research center where we actually can bring smaller versions of the process uh, and test before it actually gets implemented in the big plant. And we can also, um, we have the ability to actually do testing in the big plant uh, at, at full scale. Uh, some, uh, we have several projects that we're at where we're working on uh, in, in the big plant at full scale. Okay. So we have, we can do uh, a lot of different uh, different experiments uh, in the lab, in, at the pilot scale, and also at full scale. We're Great. fortunate to do that. Thank you. And uh, speaking of Prem, so Prem, while, while you're coming up, I'm going to ask your first question. So Orange County Water District has a world-class laboratory. So you, ha you have a lot of fun because you have all these toys that you get to play with, but there's a lot of responsibility right, that comes with that. Can, can you just give us an idea of what the lab does and your role at the lab? Sure. Um, yeah, like you said, a lot of responsibility. Um, having that reputation, right, um, it's based on the quality of our data, right, and so um, we stress all the time with our staff that um, the numbers, the data that we produce has to be um, has to be above board, it has to be unquestioned, right? And so um, 
that's what makes us different from maybe some other like private industry that's kind of looking towards more throughput, right? More samples equals more money. Um, we're not a profit organization. So, um, you know, uh, we, ha we have all, all of the toys, like you said, uh, but with that, um, it requires us to make sure that um, our data is 100% that um, when it goes to whatever um, regulatory agencies that they know they can count on our data. Right. And some of those toys are hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase. Uh, some are like half a million dollars. Yeah. Right. So right. very expensive. Um, and they can measure things at very low levels. And really it's this emphasis on public health associated with the water quality that you guys basically validate. Right. So, um, yeah, we do some of the research projects with, um, with the research department, like Yana said, right now we're doing, uh, PFAS is a very hot topic in the water industry. And so um, we're participating with uh, the research department on testing various different uh, treatment um, types to see what, what works the best for the removal of PFAS. Um, but beyond that, we do a lot of compliance monitoring for the various producers throughout the OCWD coverage area. So, um, you know, working with our water quality department to make sure that they're able to meet um, whatever permit requirements are, are necessary right. for the various different uh, cities. And exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. So Prem, I understand that, that uh, you worked at OCWD, you left, I think you worked in private industry and came back. Can you just tell us your experience on, you know, why you did that? You know, what did you learn? And um, how that works within you know the the laboratory industry? Yeah, um, I worked for OCWD for about ten years, and then um, it was the first job I got coming out of college. Um, I actually started as an intern here during my senior year. Um, I think I just got to a point where I wanted to see what else was out there. Um, I didn't actually transition to a private industry. I actually worked for the city of Santa Monica. Okay, um, but our lab here at OCWD is thirty two staff members. Uh, the lab I went to in the city of Santa Monica is only three full-time chemists, so much smaller. Um, but the things I learned there, I, as with only three people, you kind of have to wear a lot of different hats, right? OCWD is a very large organization and very specialized areas. Um, over at the city of Santa Monica, I had to do a lot of the things that maybe our water quality department does or our research department does. Um, so I got to learn more than just doing the analytical work that our lab does. So I feel like that made me a better uh, professional in the water industry. Great. Thank you, Prem. That's great. So next, uh, Derek, uh, our, our next two panel members, are, I think you heard, are operators. And it's a very uh, important component of producing the water. Uh, so Derek, Derek, welcome. And Derek, we haven't met, but I understand that you've come from, you, you had experience with the water industry before. You knew about the water industry before, so you had some understanding. Can you just tell us about that? Yeah, well, I um, come from a, a long line of, I guess, water industry professionals. Um, it all started kind of with my grandfather, who was a chemist himself. He was the first one to kind of get into the business. And then from there on, there's been... Um, you know, he had uh, seven kids and four of those ended up in the water business. And then on my mom's side, I also had a couple uncles that were in the water business. And total, there was like 10 of us in the water business throughout Southern California, you know, from Temecula to Inland Empire to L.A. County to, um, to Orange County. And even currently right now, I have my brother that works at the sanitation district. I have uh, two cousins that work there and an uncle. So you know, some jokingly say, you know, like the first family of water or so. <laughs> so many of us, or we can start our own plan or whatever. <laughs> so, so, so that's uh, exciting. Yeah. It's almost like you didn't have a choice, but I, I think, you know, we bring that up because you knew all about this industry, you know, as you were growing up from your family members, but often most people don't hear about, you know, what, you know, you do in your job and what, what we do as an industry. Um, can, can you speak to some of the roles you've had at Orange County Water District leading up to being chief uh, plant operator? Yeah, so when I first started, you know, um, obviously grew up in hearing a bunch of conversations throughout family gatherings between my uncles and my dad and stuff like that. So I got to hear a lot about the industry and kind of stuff they did. Um, it wasn't my, I kind of resisted it at first, but it ended up being a great option for me. Um, 
I fit my personality well. So I kind of started here working um, on the night shift in operations. You know, I just started on the um, as a grade one uh, entry level and just kind of uh, worked there for 10 years, which was good and had its um, advantages and disadvantages, the night shift. Obviously, it's just hard alone working at nights, but um, some of the advantages were it's a lot quieter at night, you know, so there's not as much of the hustle and bustle going on. You can kind of take your time and analyze things and experiment a little more and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. Um, as far as but the, the day shift, the limitations were during the days you get more exposure, I feel, um, to some activities that just require um, to be done and conducted during the daytime because you need the backing of, uh, you know, maintenance and I&E because we work with these departments pretty on a, much on a daily basis and stuff like that. Right. Um, and can you just speak to, you know, from an education point of view, you know, where did you go? Um, how did you get trained and what certifications are needed for your position? Yeah. So uh, I graduated with a business degree from the University of Montana. Um, as far as for water treatment and wastewater treatment. So there's a couple ways to kind of get into that. Really what you need is just the certification, right? Um, education can help you get there faster, you know, but it's not a requirement to have a, you know, a college degree actually. Um, what you really need to do is get those certifications. It does help to have relatable classes and top in uh, relatable topics that'll help you get through the system faster and, and uh, be able to progress through your grade levels faster. Um, yeah. Okay. Derek, Derek, thank you. We're, we're going to have some more questions for everybody in a minute, but just the interest of time, I want to move on to Mary. Yep. She's also a, an operator, but at the Orange County Sanitation District. And um, so, so Mary, from, from, a, from a Santa District point of view, what is your role? And, and, you know, basically, what do you do on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis? What do wastewater operators do at, at the district? Well, wastewater treatment plant operators um, protect public health and environment by making sure the treatment plant uh, equipment are running uh, or working properly. So every day when we come to work, uh, we check and monitor uh, pumps, mixers, uh, tanks, uh, blowers, and we make sure there's no faulty equipment. We respond to alarms. Uh, uh, like let's say if it's an alarm saying uh, pump fail, we go and troubleshoot. Uh, Taking samples, it's uh, one of the most important responsibility of an operator. And that's how we make sure our process is uh, healthy and happy. Uh, we work uh, closely every day with other teams, uh, such as uh, maintenance and uh, engineering. Uh, so let's say if uh, a pump fail, uh, we work with mechanics and we uh, repair or replace that pump. If our process is um, upset, uh, we work with engineering uh, to recover our process. Um, another uh, responsibility of an operator uh, is housekeeping. Uh, we always want to make sure our plant is nice and clean and uh, representative of what what we do. Yeah, these are some of the um, responsibility of an operator. And um, so Mary, it's great seeing a woman as an operator. There, there are not a lot of women operators out there. Can, can you just speak to what it, how you got into this and why you think this is such a valuable career? Well, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was in uh, junior high, but <laughs> uh, uh, I wanted to, um, initially I wanted to work in oil and gas industry. Um, and my brother, he was the one who um, talked me into uh, water, in, in, uh, water and wastewater industry. His argument was uh, the future uh, is uh, with the environment, specifically with water and wastewater. Uh, and uh, I, choose, uh, I chose wastewater over wa uh, water because uh, I like the uh, biological part of wastewater. It's more biological involved in wastewater. That's how I got in wastewater, basically my brother and um, you know, uh, seeing a brighter future in uh, environment and water and wastewater uh, field. 
uh, one of our family friends, he was a chief plant operator and uh, he introduced me to operation and he offered me a tour to the wastewater treatment plant. And I spent half a day uh, with him and his operator. And that day I uh, realized uh, operation is where I can um, combine uh, my theoretical knowledge with uh, hands-on experience. And that's what I love about operation. Okay, no, I think it makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mary. And I think it was very useful that you got that advice early on. Uh, so our last panelist, uh, Jeff, he he's works for Black & Veatch, which is an engineering consulting firm. And, um, you know, I also work with a firm that, that does engineering. But Jeff, can you just tell us the relationship between, you know, what firms like Black & Veatch do in collaboration with water and wastewater districts? Sure, Jeff. Uh as a consulting engineer, we support districts like the Orange County Water District and Orange County Sand District. And so when they look at their infrastructure and need to expand, make it bigger or plan for the future, a lot of times someone like me as a consultant will come in and help support them. And so we will help design that facility and then eventually a contractor could come in and build it or sometimes we even build it. They'll have operational challenges and issues sometimes we get involved with and so it's, it's kind of a, a relationship there that hopefully we hopefully help. And then we end up doing that for lots of utilities around the world or in the country. And so we can sometimes bring that experience and say, hey, this worked well at plant A over here. Let's bring that same contact co or concept over to the Orange County Water District. Great, Jeff. And so, so Jeff, um, how, did, how did you get into this field um, as, as an engineer? What attracted you to it? And, and also, what do you like about it? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I thought I wanted to be an architect originally. You know, I was kind of interested in that. And then I was really good in math and science. And so I kind of started down that more engineering path. It started as architectural engineering, but that morphed into civil engineering. And civil engineering is very broad. You know, it's the large infrastructure. It's roads, dams, buildings, and environment. And as I got into my classes, the environmental side really got me interested. And especially the classes I took around water and wastewater treatment. And that all of a sudden kind of per perked my interest and kind of got me focused. Um, and that'd be my advice. Don't Civil engineering, mechanical engineering, these are all very broad. Don't go in thinking you know you exactly want. I got in there thinking I wanted to do one thing and came out in a totally different industry. What I really like about it is just, there's an aspect of protecting public health and, and ensuring safe drinking water and sanitation and recycled water around the world. and using my background and understanding to help deliver that has been very interesting and rewarding for me. And, and lastly, Jeff, you're a professional engineer. What, how do you get that and, and why is that needed? Sure. Like we talked about before with engineering, we ended up developing plans and specifications for someone to construct. And so there's an element of public safety there, right? You wouldn't want to go across a bridge with somebody that didn't know how to design a bridge. And so what you go through as a professional engineer is, is kind of three aspects. One, you've done the, the coursework from a college degree. Two, you've developed experience in engineering. And three, you've passed a test. And those three things together kind of prove that you're, you have a competent engineer that can, can do work. And so when we develop those plans and specifications, we actually physically stamp or seal. And that's me saying that, hey, I have, I have done the work in this, in this system that makes it safe and important and go ahead and go out to build. And right. so in an engineering aspect, that's an important. Yeah, great, Jeff, exactly. So um, th thank you all. We're gonna ha we have a couple questions for the entire group. So if you can, uh, turn on your video. And um, the, the first question has to do with internship opportunities. And how do those work within your organization? Um, and what do will interns do? And where do they where would they come from? Um, does someone want to address this first? Uh, Dave, please. So, I mean, uh, different departments at OCWD hire interns. Um, I'm in the hydrogeology department and, and we use interns for going around to a network of monitoring wells, hundreds of monitoring wells we have without, throughout Orange County Water District and they'll measure water levels for us. They go out and measure those water levels. 
also sometimes we have field projects, whether it's modern well installations, some other aspects where we need some help. We'll use the interns for that type of work. Um, and then some office work. Um, some of it sometimes can be mundane, but that's the nature of being an intern. Um, so we look for uh, typically geology college students. Uh, so a college student full-time in geology is what we typically prefer for our interns. Anyone else want to add to that? Uh, Prem. Oh. Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm a former intern at CWD. <laughs> so um, we really like our program. Actually, um, we have 32 full-time staff in our lab, and nine of them are all former interns. So close to a third of our employees have come from our intern program. Um, I feel like it gives us a very good base for the type of analysis that we're doing. Um, it's a lot of glassware cleaning, a lot of preparation for analysis, but it helps them to understand um, the building blocks, right? You start from the bottom and understanding the quality comes from making sure everything is clean and, and ready to go. So um, that's, that's what our internship program is about. Um, we typically look for people who are in like the chemistry or bio field, uh, some environmental science, um, that's typically what we're looking for in our program. Great. Thank you, Prem. Um, yeah, anyone okay. else want to add? Okay. Uh, Yana and then Mary. Yeah, we also, in our, in our R&D department, we have interns as well. Uh, our interns, uh, they, they, uh, we have two, we hire interns for two different locations. Uh, one, we all usually have an intern in our pilot facility, our research facility, um, where they learn how to operate pilots. Uh, how to collect data, uh, how to process some of that data. Uh, another position for an intern would be actually in the laboratory where we do a lot of our testing inside the lab. Uh, they learn how to uh, set up experiments, um, how to, uh, and also uh, as, as Pran was saying, um, kind of maintenance of the laboratory using the different equipment as well. So, and we usually look for uh, backgrounds in environmental science, chemistry, um, or even microbiology. So uh, the, in R&D, they kind of get to do a lot of everything. So uh, they learn a lot of different things uh, in, in R&D. So they come up and our interns have gone to, um, to some good positions after they finish school. Yeah, it's great experience. Um, yeah. Mary, Mary, you're on mute by the way. Okay, Mary. Uh, Orange County Sanitation District, we offer internship program as well. Uh, I think uh, all the departments, uh, such as engineering and uh, operation and maintenance. I think operation and maintenance, we have 10 interns per year. And um, in uh, operation side, they usually shadow the operators. They help them with the sampling and housekeeping. Uh, and uh, most of them, they attend uh, th uh, college like water and wastewater courses. Excellent. So a lot of them are summer internships, but they also can be um, across, you know, when they're when they're in college. So, so the other, the, the last question I have before we open it up to, we'll we'll look at the questions from the attendees. So type in your your questions and uh, online if you can. But so if you had to give someone advice in pursuing a career in your field, or also maybe what you're looking for and you would like to see in people that would pursue the career. Do you have any advice along those lines? Jeff. Yeah, I, I think my advice through some of your, your college, if you're looking at engineering, is it's about understanding problem solving and the approaches to engineering. It's not knowing everything about engineering. So much, especially in the water industry, comes from that experience. So what we look for, especially in those interns and new, 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 new people coming in is, is that potential, the problem solving aspects? Not that we expect them to know everything about how to run a water or wastewater plant and aspects. And so I think that's a key thing is if that's what's interest to you and that problem solving engineering, water utility is a great, or water industry is a good place to go. Right. Other, other advice? Mary. Uh, I highly recommend that, um, um, audience, uh, they take a tour to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, Orange County Sanitation District, we offer tours to the public. Uh, 
one of the misconceptions about wastewater is a wastewater treatment plant is it's yucky, it's smelly. That's why I recommend uh, to take a tour and uh, treatment technology has advanced so much that um, you just need to come and see it's not smelly at all. And um, so that's what I recommend uh, to everybody to do. That's a great suggestion. And you can learn a lot and you see it. And these are things you typically, you, you, you don't get to see the insides of these facilities. Uh, other thoughts? Yeah, I guess uh, yes, that. Dave, and then, and then Derek. Yeah, go ahead. Dave? So um, hydrogeology, um, you can do well with just a bachelor's. And, and if you get a professional registrations, there, there are professional registrations with the state of California. One is a professional geologist, and then there's specialty registrations after that. Um, so for me, it's certified hydrogeologist. So you can go quite a ways with a bachelor's and uh, those registrations. But uh, in hydrogeology, depending on the level of work you want to do, um, if you want to do more challenging work than a master's is, is definitely a benefit. Um, but before you spend the time and effort um, and money to get a master's degree, try and get some exposure, whether it's through an internship um, or even working in the field for a little bit with a bachelor's before you jump into grad school, because um, that's, you know, again, it's a big commitment and, and effort. Thank you, Dave. Derek. Yeah, um, just going to add, as far as from the operations aspect, um, there has just been a you know, back in the day, there wasn't as much interest, but there has been a rise in interest. So we see a lot more applications come through nowadays more than ever. So the competition is a little more than it used to be. Um, to get a leg up, I just definitely recommend not wasting your time and go ahead and get your certs because you're allowed to take those grade levels right off the bat. You know, it, all it requires, they'll look at your transcripts, um, they'll assess what you have that's relatable. And then either you'll have to take a quick course, go through a Ken Curry course to take the um, take the test, or you can just apply for the test and then you're ready to go. Um, and don't be afraid to do take internships, like um, Mary was saying, visit plants and all these things, because all of that will just help you get a little bit of a leg up when it comes time for the interview process. Yeah, it shows up well uh, on a resume. Okay, great. So I'm gonna jump to the, oh, I'm sorry, Prem, did you have, did you raise your hand? Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll just say from the lab aspect, um, like everybody's been saying, um, an internship, you know, a lot of these places have internships for their labs and um, it's a different type of work than you may experience in your college classes. So um, doing analytical work can be repetitive and it's not for everybody. So getting an internship and seeing if that's for you is definitely something that you should try out. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You get that experience and you can determine how much you, you like that. Yeah. Okay, so I want to jump to the questions and, you know, anyone jump in to answer these. So the first question is, they're, they're a senior at UC Irvine and they're studying urban studies. And so is it possible to have a career in the water wastewater aid, uh, a field without, let's say, an engineering degree or a hydrogeology degree? Uh, would someone like to address that? The first thing I would say is there are a lot of other positions we haven't talked about. You know, there's planning positions. Uh, that involve things like demographics, not necessarily engineering. Um, there's communication positions. And so there's other positions within, and that's what, that's what Crystal does. Uh, but there's other positions within these, these water, uh, wastewater agencies that aren't necessarily scientific or technical. Uh, did, did someone else want to jump in, Dave? Yeah, I, I mean, at OCWD, we have in our planning department people that specialize in, for example, CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act. So before you construct anything, you have to follow the guidelines of CEQA. And uh, some cases you may be exempt depending on the project. Some cases uh, it's what you call a mitigative negative declaration, kind of a lower level evaluation that says, look, there's some impacts, but we can, we can mitigate them. In other cases, you need a full-blown environmental impact report. Um, so we have people that prepare those documents. Um, and again, it's uh, very important. Uh, before you can construct anything of any significance, you've got to make sure you meet the requirements of that California state law sequel. 
Yeah, that's a good point, Dave. Anyone else want to weigh in on this? Okay, so there are several other questions that we can get to. So the, so the next has to do with, they have a different engineering degree, they're in a different career, let's say petroleum engineering. How, do you have any advice on how to transition to the water industry? And, and, and Jeff, can I, can I ask you to maybe address this one? Sure. Um, you know, your background matters for your first job. After that, I think it's a lot about, about potential and interests and capabilities. You know, if you're still early in your career from an engineering standpoint, your understanding of problem solving, like I talked about, and ability to communicate as an engineer and other things is transferable. So I think if you were looking into the water industry, relate to those kinds of things and show how, you know, how that matches now with your interests and why you're interested in the water industry, whether that has an aspect of the environment or protecting public health. I think if you connect some of that fundamental skills with your interest, I know, especially for somebody earlier in their career, we tend to go, wow, that's great. They have the potential. We'll teach them. So keep, keep an open mind and try to sell your skills. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, the next question is uh, for Dave. And uh, they're asking about the modeling aspect associated with the groundwater models. And can you speak to that? You know, are there specific programs? Um, how is that? How is that modeling? How is that modeling done? Yeah. So um, when you're modeling, particularly, uh, you know, whether it's a groundwater basin, a large area, or even some smaller projects, site-specific areas, you know, groundwater flow uh, can be very complex. There are a lot of input parameters. Um, how much water is coming into your system? Recharge. What's, you know, there's a water budget, what's going in, what's coming out, pumping or groundwater outflow. Um, and it's, it's really important to understand the geology um, so that your model is simulating as close as, you know, reasonably close to what the real world looks like. And if you don't understand the geology and they're just numbers, you can say, well, my model calibrated, my, my computer spit out water levels that are like exactly what you see but it's like, well, wait a minute, you, you've input hydraulic conductivity of a clay and we know it's a sand. So, because there's so many input parameters for model, it's, it's good to understand all of them. So there are courses in modeling. Um, you know, I took a groundwater modeling course in, in grad school and did modeling from a master's, part of my master's thesis. But I think it's also important that you have some understanding of, you know, fundamental geology so that when you develop a groundwater model, um, it's not just a black box. You understand the input parameters. Um, so, you know, there was an old saying, garbage in, garbage out, you know, referring to computer models. Um, so you don't want that to happen. So I would say that, yes, there are modeling courses um, within a lot of hydrogeology programs at universities. Um, and of course, there's, you know, basic geology classes as well. So uh, you understand the environment that you're modeling. Okay, and um, one of the questions that was sent in for the during registration was, what are the pros and cons for working within the public sector, like for the for the water wastewater districts, and the private sector, like a consulting firm, right, Jeff? Um, so, to, does anyone want to weigh in on uh, what you think the pros are for working in your sector? Maybe that's a good way to start. Uh, Prem. Sure. So um, I have, I've never actually worked in the private sector, but we get a lot of people who come from the private sector. So uh, from a lab standpoint, um, I mentioned before, they're very focused on throughput for their samples and um, trying to get as many pumped out as possible. Uh, for us in our lab, we're focused on data quality. So we, our staff knows that the data they produce is of the highest quality and they can go home and sleep well at night that they didn't break any rules or anything like that. They can focus on producing the best quality work that they can. So that's a difference for us. Okay, and, and Jeff, did you raise your hand? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I think one of the pros at least in the consulting is 
the variety of different problems and utilities that I've had the opportunity to work on my career, you know, um, worked on plants in Australia, worked on plants all over. And I think that variety is a pro. The con aspect uh, just <laughs> is sometimes you get to see little snippets and you don't get to see the full picture. And so that's an aspect. And then, you know, why I help a lot of communities, I really don't have the connectivity to that public. And I think maybe some of the, somebody might from the Sand District of Watershed talk about their connectivity to protecting their community. And Dave, I think you. Uh... Yeah, you know, I've, I've worked both. In fact, I've, I've spent more of my career in private consulting than I have at the Water District, although it's getting close. It was 20 years in private consulting and 15 with the Water District. But, um, you know, and Jeff mentioned just the variety of projects was definitely a, a pro. Um, <clears throat> you know, I got to work for a company where I could work on water supply projects, you know, groundwater wells for water supply, um, looking at uh, uh, aquifers and, and is there enough supply, not just constructing wells, but uh, water balance, um, things we also do at OCWD. But, um, and then I also got to work on environmental projects, a lot of soil and groundwater contamination projects. Um, so I got a good diversity of different projects to work on. Um, I would say the con is, uh, you know, it's a business and it's a for profit. Um, and so budgets and schedules are very important. And, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, late nights and weekends, a lot more that I worked on in private consulting than I do now. The water district, although I still have those moments, even at the water district. Um, but I, I can tell you, you know, my uh, my boss, the chief hydrogeologist, Roy Herndon, he prefers to hire hydrogeologists that have experience in private industry. They've just they've developed, you know, a strong work ethic. They understand, you know, there are such things as budgets and schedules and need to get things done. And uh, so I think that's a big advantage. Um, the uh, the nice thing about the water district and they're they're all going to be different. OCWD is a very unique place, very unique. And we've got just some great project work and great people to work on them. Um, and, and an agency that's very forward thinking. Some water agencies, it's just water supply and you only work on their production wells and, and you don't get quite as a diversity. We've got, you know, managing the groundwater basin. We've got um, seawater intrusion problems. That's unique. You don't have many places where you're dealing with seawater intrusion. And we, we operate a seawater intrusion barrier. And we co-own another one with LA County. Um, and we've got groundwater contamination projects as well. So, uh, you know, at OCWD, yeah. it's pretty unique. But uh, it's been great at yeah. both. I, I really have to say, great at both. Yeah, so they both have advantages. And, um, and as we said, you can actually move back and forth like Dave has. So we're coming towards the end of the time. I'd like to thank the panelists for participating and taking the time to share your experiences. Very valuable. Uh, I learned a lot. It was, it was very useful to hear all, hear all this. And, and Crystal, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. And thank you to our six panelists for joining us today. You all have such a wealth of experience and advice and have such a unique story and background. Um, for all of you joining us, I hope you found this webinar useful. I know there were a lot of questions uh, that we did not get to. You guys had some amazing questions, but the good news is if you did not submit it anonymously, we do have record of that. So we are going to follow up with all of you who did submit your question, who did not get it answered live today um, to ensure that, that you have the information that you need going, going forth. And if perhaps a, a question comes to you after the fact, or if uh, you did submit a question anonymously and, and want an answer, please email us at info at ocwd.com. We will do our best to answer them and route your question to the appropriate person. So I want everybody to know, um, you know, all of our panelists are so knowledgeable and Jeff is such an amazing moderator. If you have questions for any of our six panelists or Jeff um, as well, please, please send them to us um, and we will get back to you with the ones previously submitted um, both today as well as ahead of time. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and you will receive an email tomorrow afternoon with the link. So if you have any 
friends, family, coworkers that may find it interesting, uh, you're welcome to forward that to them. And finally, um, we would love for you to stay in touch with us um, by visiting our websites as well as following us on social media. Um, we all have LinkedIn pages as well. A uh, little long to write in here, but you can search for us uh, with our name, but we would love to, to have you follow us on social media, see what's up with our districts. And then of course, our career opportunities are posted on our subsequent websites. Um, so again, thank you everyone for attending today and have a wonderful day.